Joe Blasco here for MUA TV. And this is not new faces in makeup because this man that I'm about to interview has been around for a long time. Don't go away. We're going to be right back with Tom Supernaut right after this. Welcome back, Joe Blasco here with Tom a Supernaut. Now, look, right off the bat, all right, we got to get the, the pronunciation of the name right. Oh boy, come on, Supreno, 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 French, right? Okay, yes, French. E. <laughs> Very good. You've been in this business a long time. Oh, okay. Twenty-five years, twenty-two, uh, about twenty, uh, professionally about twenty-three. Yeah. yeah. But you're one of like Hollywood's best kept secrets. Are all these department heads like hiding you in the back of the trailer, Sometimes having you do all of these fantastic makeups, and then like at least you know you, yeah. somebody gave you some credit here, right? Right. And and uh, Mike Westmore, uh, yeah, just a wonderful, wonderful the dude. Best. Man. The and, best. Uh, Is this from Star Trek? Uh, yes, uh, Deep Space Nine. All um, right. And. Uh, the second, uh, uh, it was the second season of Deep Space Nine, and right. uh, it was for an episode called Distant Voices. And then uh, the uh, next season, uh, we did an episode called The Visitor with yes. more age makeups. Yes. And I was nominated again, but Excellent. didn't get that one. Excellent. It went to our sister show, Voyager. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, well. Yeah. Yeah, Mike, I think, has gotten more nominations and Emmys for makeup than anybody in the business. Uh, yeah. Isn't that amazing? He's, he's so he's so superb. He's so and one hell of a nice guy. Yes. He's most, invited us over to his home to do an interview. Oh, yeah, excellent. Yeah, that's yeah. Gonna be, him that's, and Marion. That's, that's going to be such fun. wonderful people. Yeah, that's going to be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to that. Um, let me, if I may, uh, let me just go down the. Now, I'm really serious when I say that this man has been doing a lot of stuff. I mean a lot of stuff. I mean these are these are shows. That everybody, I mean, X Men Three, Pirates of the Caribbean. Uh, obviously, we know V Neil. Oh yes, in, yes. You know what I mean? We want to give credit to yeah. the department yes. heads. But you worked on these shows, and, right? And you did, uh, you, uh, you know, an outstanding job on some pretty heavy duty makeups here. Um, Big Fish, Frida. Uh, oh, you worked on Frida. Yes. With John Jackson. Uh, yes, yes. Um, Were you on location? Yes, in Mexico City, and um, it was a, a very strange one of those phone calls that you just get going, would you like to come down and work on this? And I've always been a fan of Frida's, uh, Fr the real Frida. Um, and it was one of those opportunities, just at one in a million, and, and right. got to fly down to Mexico City and, and uh, see, what is it, the um, uh, largest city in the world. Yeah. yeah. And um, get but, ca very confused right now. your question. There. John, I believe, won an Academy Award. Yes. For that. Yes. And were you part of that team? Um, no, no. I, I was only on there for a couple of days and oh, stuff, I see. but doing some age makeups, as a matter of fact. Yes. Which was really interesting. I brought some pieces from home, right. and actually, uh, because of the situation, oh, I probably shouldn't say this, but I helped out with a little bit of hair as well. Oh, you did? Yeah. I'm licensed cosmetologist since Are you a local 706 member? Yes, I am. Oh, not yeah. for long. <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. I think you were far enough. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I don't think it was a union. You, film. you know, people, people can, oh, that's right. It probably wasn't, yeah, was it? So, hmm. Well, all right. Well, we won't go there. But, yeah. you know, John's, what is he, the secretary of the local 706? Right. Working a non union film. John, shame on you, man. Well, anyway, <laughs> here we go. Let's do this. The Scorpion King. Yes. Tell me about the screen. That's what. Uh, um, the Rock. Yeah. yeah. And um, what did you do? In it's, uh, wow. Uh, two units running simultaneous. And um, dear sweet Jeff Don. Um, Isn't he talented, great? amazing. He's got this new uh, trailer. Oh, the got. trailer, yeah. Yeah, the, the, it's, uh, the Pegasus. It's, and it's so I, we've amazing. Been, we contacted him. I had Travis Pates contact him uh, because I wanted to to see the Pegasus mm -hmm. and show it on the air. Because there are actually, since I mentioned it, we've gotten emails about mm. it. And oh. there, there are people from production companies you know, around the country and in Europe. It's the most <laughs> that are amazing, interested in amazing it. And gadget. then there are other companies that also do trailers. A company in Tampa? 
Orlando, Orlando hmm. that heard me say that we were going to show the Pegasus, and they want to show their trailer. So we're stirring up all kinds of stuff. Right. Here. Um, Travis, shame yeah. on you. But uh, um, there was two units, and, and um, one was way out in Lancaster, past Lancaster, and it was the middle of summer. And um, that was Jeff's first unit, and yeah. I was over on second unit. Um, and uh, um, gosh, uh, Jim Cagle, and oh my gosh. Uh, uh, I, I names. <laughs> right, right. No, 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 it's no, something okay. that older you get, the more things go off warranty. Older, listen to him. But, but, uh, the older we get, <laughs> but uh, we were at Universal Backlot, and uh, it was tons of fun. It was like 800 BC, and so we did these, you know pretty much as accurate as we could um, right. uh, Asia Minor Middle East whatever right. you want to call it um, makeups and stuff a lot of coal eyeliner and right. like stained lips yes. you know to imitate pomegranate right, right. it's just a, I felt right at home I enjoyed it very much he, he has such a, a an excited look you, have, you really do I mean really? I can see you're just completely you know still com totally passionate I'm, about what you do. I really do love what I do. Yeah, I, yeah. Every once in a while I'll do that big thing where you question yourself and it's like, do you still love what you do? And it's like, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, because it's it's art and it's right. art that you get paid for right. while you're alive. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that's what's so great about doing shows like this is because I'm able, you know, to to reconnect, so to speak, mm. you know, because I've been, you know, I've been running makeup schools and cosmetic companies and now creating this thing. Um, and I've been you know, away from the art, actually, mm. of, of being on the set. And uh, reconnecting with, with other makeup artists has really been a joy. And, you know, and it's, it's helped to, uh, like, rekindle a lot going on in my head, too, which is really terrific. I see the, the, the look in your eyes is just is fantastic. You really love what you do. I'm very happy to see that. I've been very and, fortunate. Yeah, yeah. I think we're all real fortunate to be doing something that we really love to do, you yeah. know. And uh, so the Scorpion King, AI. What'd you do in AI? Um, uh, mechas. A bunch of uh, mechas for a scene um, in the film called Flesh Fair. It's when all the uh, broken down um, synthetic humans were being tortured to death and, and uh, um, buckets of acid poured on them. And oh, my. It was, it was really kind of a depressing scene in the movie. Ooh. And they were going to kill Jude Law and, and uh, Haley Joel Osment off. Uh, right, right. And, and uh, um, it was really cool for me because the band Ministry was there. And I got <laughs> I got to hang out with Ministry, which, wow. You know, that's kind right. of, you know, a cool thing. And, yeah, yeah. and uh, But um, it was a really, that movie in particular was something that was, it, it really helped me like learn a lot about how fortunate we all are. We had a lot of people who were disabled, who were born um, uh, missing arms and legs, and we had some people with some really tragic, horrible industrial accidents mm -hmm. who were missing arms and legs and pretty messed up. Mm -hmm. And um, they had their mechanical bits, so th that kind of lended to the characters right. um, being damaged and whatnot. And, yeah. and um, it, once again, it was great working with Stan Winston, you know. Oh, and uh, God rest his soul, what a yeah. sweet, sweet, wonderfully talented, wonderful, wonderful man. Growing up watching movies that Stan yeah. did, and then being lucky enough to like, right. you know. Be, to work with him. Be there, you yeah. know, just gluing How were you, did you work at, Did you work at his lab for long? <laughs> no, I, I, I was just always on set doing stuff. And But uh, I remember the ver very first time, it was a Michael Jackson music video we were doing called Ghosts. And um, I had to load up the trailers, and I had my list of things to load the trailers up with. And, and um, all prep days, and got to go to the lab for my very first time. And just the little entrance where the secretary is right. um, at the front desk, there was all these maquettes of dinosaurs. And I was just like, oh, these are so beautiful, beautiful. I'd love to have one in my home. They're just like beautiful pieces of art, like yeah. like museum quality. And then you walk into the conf down a hall and then into this conference room, and there's all these like um, Lestat and, and a T Rex head coming through the wall wow. and aliens and. Um, uh, 
the Ice T Ripper from uh, Tank Girl and right. and Velociraptors and and mm. they were just big silicone and rubber pieces right, right. and and it was weird. I was looking at all of them up close and I got to the Raptor and I actually stood back from it. It it looked like it, so real. Yeah, yeah, I mean that was just beautiful work and yeah. and so seriously. It's yeah, like, he he had uh, or he has they they still have there. A, an incredible team of art, oh, artists yeah. in every area of the of the art, in mold, you know, sculpting and mold making and foaming, everything, right. painting, whatnot. They're all and they're always exquisite. on the cutting edge yeah. of of new products, right. um, like the syntactic dough molds. Yes. Um, it was amazing to see because I heard so much about this and and to see the T Rex mold. Yeah, and actually. It was huge, <laughs> and being able to just kind of nudge it and right. it actually moved. Right, it was it was that light, but they still could bake rubber in it. And, yes, and that's I heard, incredible. Isn't I heard that? stories I mean, that they drop stuff deliberately to see how. Oh, durable, and, yeah, but yeah. that's stealth technology. Yeah. It was actually stuff that was used in fabricating, like the stealth bomber or something. Yeah. That's what the story. See, that's, the what's story so great, that's what's so great about this art is is that it, it you know you can techniques change because. Of technology because right. products, right? Because of constant improvement in everything that we do, mm -hmm. you know, which keeps us, you know, having to study all the time. <laughs> you know, like what, uh, let me just go down here. I'm just gonna, you, Donnie Darko, How the Grinch Stole Christmas, uh, Charlie's Angels, um, Supernova, Halloween, uh, H2O, Goodbye Lover, Romeo and Michelle's High School Reunion, that must have been fun. Uh, the People versus Larry Flint, Star Trek, First Contact, The Crow 2, City of Angels. Uh, set it off, Showgirls, Desperado, Batman Forever, Chameleon, Star Trek 7, Surviving the Game, North, Coneheads. I mean, it just goes on and on. Oh, California was spelled with a K. One of my favorites. R really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. I saw that. It was kind of revived uh, down on Beverly Boulevard at that theater. I don't know what the theater is, is down there. The Beverly, Beverly Theater, maybe it's called. And they, they, it's like first run right. you know, but films that were done a while ago. And that was uh, with Brad Pitt, wasn't right? It? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I got to design uh, Brad's makeup with his tattoos. And I loved that. I makeup. did all these tattoos and and burns, yeah. like cigarette burns, where it looked right. like he was putting right. out cigarettes on himself. And you never see any of that. I had never seen. I didn't see that make uh, that movie when it first came out. And I thought, let me go and check it out. So I, I went and I watched it, and I was very impressed with the makeup. And I thought, wow, this is kind of like a like an off-the-wall kind of low-budget picture, but it's really got some great, great makeup. I had, like, no money for yeah. any of the stuff I did. It was like, okay, Brad gets hit in the face with a shovel, from, you know, and <laughs> David Duchovny gets, like, slashed across his face, and we want to see it bleed on camera. Right, right. And It uh, was gory. It, it was bloody. It was a violent, violent right. movie because, uh, well, the, the character. I, the, right. Brad's character was just... He was he was so unlikable. I mean, he was crazy and he, he wasn't was so nice. Good. He was and, really yeah, good in that yeah, picture, wasn't was, he? <laughs> he's always good. But uh, um, the Coneheads, yeah, one of my forward. first union jobs, actually. How long have you been a member of Local Seven Hundred Six? Ninety three, I believe. Wow. Yeah. Batman Returns. You know, I mean, this just goes on and on. You've, I mean, they 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 must have you like on the. On the the A list, right? For oh, if there's special makeup effects, call Tom. Well, it's I'd like to think that. <laughs> well, I, but it, it's it's it's, it's um, obvious. You know, some of the it's it's really interesting. Some of the jobs that I have gotten have really been from word of mouth. Like when when I got Donnie Darko, and I, right. I have to mention that because right. um, uh, that movie, out of every movie I think I've ever done, that movie was the movie that I would recommend anyone to see because right. it's such a, a deep movie with such a... Um, dark. Yeah, it's dark, but there's also so much heart in it, and mm -hmm. it's um, uh, one of the actors and I have kept in contact, mm -hmm. Jimmy Duvall, and, and uh, he was asked at this thing we were doing a while ago, what did you think the movie was about? And he goes, love. And I was like, yeah. that's really it. And um, it is. And it's, yep. it's just, it's a, it really got me. It was yeah. like such a beautiful, deep story. Yeah. And, and Lynn Barber, just an adorable, a wonderful, talented. And she worked her butt off on that movie. And, and I got called in at the last minute yeah. as, as kind of a favor yeah. for, you know, the people putting How lucky, it on. that's great. And I, I, 
they've, they've got a toy of Jimmy Duvall as Frank the Bunny. <laughs> and there's the bunny head, and you could either you know have him with the bunny head or him with the mask off, okay. and it's my makeup. I love it. That's, that, to me, was cool. I'm like, <laughs> I did that, and that's, they made a toy of it. I love so, that. That's anyway, great. That's one of those things. That's why I look excited. Home? No. <laughs> I, that's really embarrassing, but no, I don't have that toy at oh. home. But I, I do have the I do have the eyepiece and the original yeah. eyebrow that I you did. And, oh, well, you um, have to bring those in sometime for, okay. not for another show, and we'll okay. show them. All right. And um, all right. Now, you know, I I'm just I feel like I've really been cheated for a lot of a lot of years not knowing you. Mm. Yeah. Well, thank you. You know, because you know we're always looking for really terrific makeup artists. You know, at both of my schools, soon to be three schools, are going to be opening a school in New York next where, year. Where yeah. about New York? You know, we're, we, we've got like three locations, but I'm, I'm really zeroing in on Midtown. Mm. You know, we, uh, we have one that was like um, over there by that uh, Astoria Kaufman Studios, mm. one location over there in Long Island City. Oh, okay. Uh, and then there was another down, uh, down at the very southernmost part of, of Manhattan. Mm. I can't think of what that area is called. So, uh, so it's my choice, and I we just went up to New York to, to cover the uh, Makeup Artist Summit that was put on by the Powder Group, oh, right. which was a really terrific show, by the way. And you mm. should look at you guys out there uh, next time. It's it's similar to a trade show, but uh, a little more intimate, you know. And we're going to be running the uh, uh, spots of it, all, all the all the footage that we got in New York. You're going to be able to see right here on MUA TV. So look out for that. Uh, but uh, it's something. Uh, uh, that was that's been long coming the school in New York long long overdue and we've got a list of people like 200 people that are on the list to to, to attend the school in New York wow. once once we open that school so we're really happy with that um, let me uh, and and so what I was getting to was is that uh, I understand you're working not for a school but for like a traveling uh, educational seminar company. Yes, what, yes. what is the name of that company? Lastlooksmakeup.com. Lastlooksmakeup.com. Yes. Excellent. Yeah. And, and Last guys, Looks Makeup Academy is actually. Yeah, and Last but, Looks Makeup Academy, lastlooksmakeupacademy.com. Um, we, uh, obviously, you know, Joe Blasco Makeup Schools. Right. Um, we're, we, you know, we've been around for 38 years. Uh, we are now helping to, we feel, you know, promote other schools as well that we feel are worthy schools mm. to be promoted. And um, now that I have met you, I have no qualms whatsoever about promoting Last Looks. Oh, well, thank you. You know, it's, well, it's terrific if, to if know it's, that there's people like you out there I, I, at other I've schools, I've written all the too. curriculum for the schools yeah, as well. Yeah, that's great. You know, just... Uh, that's very good, very good. Maybe we could get you to come over and do some classes over here. I huh? would be honored. Yeah. And could I tell you... A, why haven't you... Why did you come here well, a long time ago? You know... I actually was here many, many years ago, and this is a very embarrassing story, but I, I think that you'll find it amusing. Um, it was probably late 80s, and it was right around that horrible writer strike in 88, and I, I uh, just got back from England, and, and I think Mamie just opened up his new store, and I was doing deliveries for them because I couldn't find any other work at the time because of the strike and everything else that was going on, and I did a delivery here many, many years ago, and uh, you know, I just got to peep in a little bit, and I was like, "Wow, this is such a cool place," and um, but that that was kind of yeah, <laughs> that was kind of and 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 here I am now. It, it's kind of odd. Right, but, right. Um, I, well, I'm, I'm I kind never of, yeah. knew about um, how to go about um, asking. Once again, I'm one of those word of mouth people. If it's kind of hard to let go, and yeah. I'm kind of shy. Yeah, you know, he actually are. He's really a sensitive kind of guy, you know. And and it's so amazing that someone as sensitive as you um, and shy. And I see it in your eyes. You are shy. Uh, does such outrageous, bloody, gory stuff, <laughs> isn't that? It's a, I was kind of like that. Mm. I was a little shy and kind of like backward. I grew up in a, a little farm town outside of Pittsburgh. Oh, you know, and uh, I did all this sort of thing. You know, I ended up doing all that Ilsa She Wolf of the SS stuff and yeah. David Cronenberg's early pictures. So I, I, you know, I don't know. Maybe that's our one way of expressing ourselves. You know, by going over the edge. You know, mm. doing all that that kind of that kind of thing. But um, so anyway, but we'll we'll talk more about that. Okay. okay. And Tom, now uh, you've got uh, Tom Supernal Product uh, Creations, and uh, these are 
these are products that you make. It says here, Tom's special prosthetic paint is a high uh, is in high demand from big name makeup artists around the world. Some of the movies Tom's products have been featured include the Santa Claus one, two, and three, or one and three. No, uh, all three of them. All three of them. Okay, yeah. there you go. The Scorpion King. We did makeup for the Scorpion King too. We did body makeup. We made all the gallons of body oh, makeup really? for I the didn't... Scorpion King. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And. Uh, uh, Terminator 3 and the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Tell me about, I was over at Namie's yesterday and uh, I saw your products on the shelf. In fact, I looked at them and I remarked, oh, he's coming over tomorrow. Mm. Uh, uh, what are these products? Tell us about Tell the whole world. Wow. What, tell the whole world what um, these products are. Well, I, I have Dick Smith to thank, like we all do, yes. um, uh, for the uh, PAX formula. And uh, I, I just remember years ago, and California, I think, was the show that the big turning point was. Um, we were shooting in Death Valley in the summer, and nothing was sticking. And the regular PAX formula was, um, it, I mean, it's always good, but I wanted more pigment in it. And I remember reading Vincent Kehoe's book, um, and, and he was talking about vehicle um, pigment to vehicle ratios and I'm like very good well you know there's got to be a way to get more pigment into that vehicle of glue and so I started formulating um, uh, with cosmetic pigment and dye as opposed to um, just your standard uh, acrylic paint mm -hmm. formula mm -hmm. <clears throat> and uh, and then as the years progressed um, I found uh, mattifiers and all sorts of you know fun little things to put in it and mm -hmm. and, and like some um, surfactants and, and whatnot, mm -hmm. and it's it's airbrushable. And then, lo and behold, uh, the, the the folks at Premier Products approached me on the Grinch, um, and said, "Have you tried our Beta Bond?" And I'm like, "No, I haven't." And they're like, "It's it's similar um, to the other acrylic emulsion adhesives out there. Yeah. It's waterproof, not just resistant, which I found to be true, uh, f especially for um, tons of blood work. Uh, it's it's brilliant stuff yeah. to seal." pieces with um, and they gave me some to play with and I started formulating and came up with one using that as a base as opposed to the Dick Smith formula with Prosade yes. and um, I, I, I like it a lot. I still have some clients who are like, I like the old formula, don't change things and I'm like, well, that's life. Uh, <laughs> but um, And uh, the folks at Premier that's Products progress. have been so wonderful. They're and coming by, uh, really? Scott and Eric, yeah, they're going to oh, be coming by uh, they, to visit us, I believe. Yeah, they're they have, they yeah, they have been so good about understanding what I'm doing and 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 helpful, just incredibly helpful yeah. guys. And they really stand by their products and yeah. and uh, yeah, they're great guys. They're really smart, and I like that. Yeah. I, it's they're not just selling products, but they know they know yeah. those products. Well, they, they they know what they're doing. They, uh, the father's really amazing. Mm. Who uh, was the founder of the company? Right, right. And very soft-spoken gentleman. Mm -hmm. You know, very, 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 very knowledgeable man. I've, I've only and the met kids him are great. Yeah, Eric and yeah. Scott. But, they're, uh, they're really following in their father's footsteps. Yeah, very, uh, very, very much so, and doing a great job of it. The products are superb. Mm -hmm. We we use a lot of the Skin Illustrator stuff. Right, right. You know, and the adhesives, all the telluses, the yes, adhesives, and yes. all of that. Yeah, you know, which is really great. the removers are amazing. Yeah, and uh, I love super solve. Yes, and, yeah. and the the beta solve, <clears throat> beta solve yeah. for for removing the uh, the beta bond, and and a lot of people ask me, what do you remove? Your product with, and I'm like beta cell because it was designed for right. the glue that's right. in it. Exactly. And um, but um, I started I started making the stuff up and and matching colors that are popular colors that are in my makeup kit because I've seen so many people just mix up beige wine or you know like right. just odd colors <laughs> whatever you know right. and I'm like well I use a lot of this color from RCMA and I use this William Tuttle color and I use this Belasco color right. and um, especially your concealer <laughs> colors oh, <yeah. laughs> because <clears throat> you can alter any color with those yes, and stuff can. and uh, the undertone yeah and, and um, the strangest thing was I, I got a call somehow from some Australian makeup artists and they started using it um, for a time cop, I think was the mm. series or something, right. and they were saying how muggy and humid and yes. hot, nothing was sticking, yes. and packs the regular packs were rolling right off their actors, and I'm like, okay, right. well, here's some of mine. Tell me what you think. And then the next thing I know, they're putting in orders. Right. I'm shipping to Australia, and, and it was funny because I took it around to a few beauty supplies, and they're like, no one's gonna buy that. You think Greg Canham's gonna buy that or Rick Baker? And I'm like. 
well, no, probably not. But what about you know the student or whatever? Why not? You know, and, and why, why not? It was, why would they it say that? It was the theory that you know people make their own stuff, and and yeah, granted, yeah, you know, we all do, but mine's not quite the same because it's right. using different products. And there are all different levels of passion, and and and, uh, and you seem to go into the chemistry end of it as right. well, you know, which is terrific. And yeah. and sometimes these guys, uh, you know, they don't they don't have that going on in their lab and you know they would rather find a product that that will work for mm -hmm. them you know and i can't imagine why any of those big names wouldn't want to buy your well product. the funny thing is years later i ended up selling to the beauty supplies and then for some reason everyone kind of wanted it in theirs and then as it as it is right. it's it's hard because then you're it's like oh you're playing favorites because this person's selling it and you're not whatever but, uh, but besides it's only that, available in Namies though isn't it Namies and Bermans and um, this this great store in Vancouver Canada called Holly North. Holly North. <laughs> and we love in the Holly North. North. Holly yes. North in the North. And uh, Burnaby, actually, not Vancouver proper. I see. But <laughs> anyway, they, they have been really, really wonderful people. Yes. Um, uh, but um, So you're an entrepreneur also, aside from being a makeup artist. Somewhat, yes. Yeah, yeah that's very good. Um, passion. There's the passion I'm talking about. What's really interesting is once this got in the stores, I started getting calls from different people. Right. The very first time I physically got to meet Rick Baker was uh, me dropping by his his shop uh, in Glendale, his yes. his latest shop, his big grand grandiose shop, and uh, to buy product from me, and I was like, wow, well, there, <laughs> Rick, there you Rick are. Baker just bought product, and then I got a call to go up to Greg's um, place, yeah. and um, and uh, what is that, Castaic or um, uh, was, Greg's up in I think Canyon Country, Canyon Country up in that area, yeah. Valencia. Yeah, yeah. and and I, I this was. Oh, several years ago, and it's yes. like pre bicentennial, man. And he he wanted some product, and he wanted like some specific Tuttle colors, yes. which was really interesting. So that was for uh, on the silicon, right? For use on the silicon. Um, th this was this like I said, this was pre actually that. So I don't know. Oh. I don't remember what show he was doing. Yeah, and God, um, he's done so many. Yeah, it's hard to keep track of other people, yeah. let alone my own. Right, right. You know, <laughs> history. I don't know. I run into people, and they're like, we worked together for six months. And Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, great. you know, but uh, it, so what's what's uh, what's next for you? Oh gosh, uh, you have new products coming out. Um, new? Well, um, there's some stuff I've been working on, and the products that you you will find at Namie's are the paints. Yeah, and uh, one of them uh, just got renamed uh, because a lot of straight makeup artists who like kind of straight makeup names yes. um, couldn't. Uh, kind of wrap their hands around the stuff that I have called clear base shine and for like lab guys you know of course we're gonna grab that and go hey I know what to do with that right but for the straight makeup artist it's like I, well, all right so I came up with a, a, friend a of mine. straight makeup artist you're referring to the fact that they do straight makeup. yes primarily like beauty and, right and and out of the right, kit right. character. No, kind no of special stuff. makeup effect. Right, and and uh, um, this one friend of mine uh, actually uh, was uh, working on uh, the new Terminator movie, Terminator 4, yes. and uh, I said, well, a lot of different folks I know have been using this uh, for Who sweat. That? Who was um, that? Kim Green. Kim, uh, Kimberly Green. Yes. Um, and uh, uh, she's like, for sweat? And I'm like, yeah, it's it stays on. You never have to re-wet it. Right. And um, it doesn't sweat off because it's the base with a polymer, a shine polymer yes. in it. Yes. Uh, that my so it product. Looks like sweat. Yeah, and yeah. Um, and it's clear. It's clear, and it goes on kind of milky, and it yeah. dries clear. And you can smear it on with a sponge, or yeah. you could stipple it on with like an orange sponge or something. I like used that. to have a product that did exactly the same thing, and mm. I called it matte sealer. Really? And it was matte medium that you could get in a in an art supply store. Ah. Uh. Yeah. Okay. It was it was similar to that. When you said milky, it, re, it reminded oh, okay. me of that. We don't make it anymore. Mm, okay. it, but it was a blend of things. But you, it basically, it was a blend between matte medium and and uh, the gloss medium, oh. acrylics. All right. And and, okay. and that we used to use the matte. We used the matte uh, as actually a sealer on prosthetic appliances. Oh, okay. You know, and would put a skin over the appliance with it, and it, it would dry. It would seal in the appliance. It would help also to build up. You know, and get rid of the edge. Mm -hmm. You can use it around the edges. Okay. And it would be very, very matte 
and, mm. and uh, where we wanted the shine, we'd take the gloss medium with a coarse beard stipple sponge right. and just put and stipple the shine, you know, right where we wanted Very it. Very cool. Yeah, okay. yeah. I, it was wor worked better than KY because it right. really stayed. And, and KY goes dull after a while yeah. and stuff like that. And, yeah. and um, it just, from years and years of like, you know, dealing with right. sweat from. Uh, basketball players in, in Buffy right. the movie right. uh, who we had big water bottles and yes. just finally just kept spraying them down right. um, and and glycerin getting in people's eyes and whatnot yes. um, and it's weird because I originally made this product to work as a medium right. uh, where you could do layers yes. uh, progressive transparent, yes, transparent layers, layers right. on Rubber is it matte or no? It's, this is shiny. It's this shiny. is the shiny one. We're and what's about. interesting is I I did this because um, the whole silicone prosthetic craze and and you know oh you can't get that kind of translucency and I'm right. like, well, bet me I, I paint I paint <laughs> I let me try it. this. He's feisty. Well you know you're feisty. I yeah. love I love my foam latex prosthetics. Yeah. Everyone's like oh silicone. I'm like you know, what about gelatin? Uh, you know you know you've got Greg is doing silicone right and Ma Matthew's, Matthew's doing, doing gelatin and. Red Rick is doing foam rubber and, uh, or anything and everything. And I and like a good combination. And this yeah. comes from a, my dear mentor who who I, I love dearly and, and ha I've learned so much at the, the feet of the great Kevin Haney. Oh. <laughs> so, you know, I just... Kevin is wonderful. Kevin was on uh, the show. Oh. Uh, in fact, I think we still have yet to run part two of the Kevin Haney interview. Uh, and he is such a great guy and passionate. passionate. But as you are and as I was, <laughs> very shy. He is very shy, but you know, working some dynamic. late hours Ooh, with him, the, the, his personality comes out and, yeah. and he's such, he's such a big kid yeah. with a heart of gold yeah. and a, a brain that that I, it's amazing it can even fit in his skull. He is yeah. so smart. Yeah, they, they, I just love I love that because we could talk on on right. some out there level the chemistry level right. and That's and right. uh, and we'd go back and forth. It, it wouldn't be little civil conversations about this and this and this. Right. It would be like no. And then I would get out the Merck index and you know he's like, <laughs> well I don't believe what you're. Yeah. I'm like, well I don't you know. So let's just let's say we both agree to disagree on this and and uh, yes. But uh, he's he, he. One of the things I learned from him was kind of mixing things up, um, and and like for age makeups, I think that a silicone neck, yes. the dewlap and everything, because that moves so, so much. Like, yeah. and then you've got the like weight, flesh. and the whole point of it is it you want it to. Right. And and I like foam latex here, right. a gelatin nose, gelatin ears. Yes, yes. And then when you see the finished makeup, you're like, hmm, what? Well, that looks like no. What you know? Yeah. You can't really figure it out. <laughs> that's it's, that's it's like stippling. You're the first first makeup artist that has told me this. Really, mixing the different appliances. They every one of them. It's either all gelatin or it's all foam or it's all silicone. Wow. And I think that what you're saying is really right on the money because there's depending on the structure. You know, and 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 the, the gravity and whatnot. Why not mix them? Right. You know, and I mean, you know. It tri it's triple the work because you're making all different kinds of molds. <laughs> <laughs> but the end result. You, this has is to be so a latex good. area. This is your silicone area. This is your well, gelatin area. Actually, uh, Richie Alonso turned me on to. Um, uh, maybe I shouldn't say this, but I will anyway. He turned me on to some um, uh, amazing tin cured um, silicone, and I yes. ended up getting some for this uh, medical show I was on many years ago. And it's a little tricky at first because you can over plasticize it like anything else, yeah. uh, but it's a tin cured that has the same kind of attitude as a platinum cured, mm -hmm. and um, it's not touchy and, and weird right. about sulfur in the air or sulfur on your sculpting tools. Right, and, right sulfur in your clays. Um, I had a very small lab uh, that was built for me uh, for for the show I was on and it was hard. The ventilation in there was just, it, it was so bad and it took the last season of the show to finally get decent ventilation. Um, uh, it, it, it's amazing I'm not in an iron lung right now. Yeah, that's really, and, uh, that's one of the first considerations that a production company should, should uh, make uh, and have and that is 
uh, really, really adequate ventilation, especially if they're doing if you're doing airbrushing, yes, and, and working with all these really volatile oh, I was, chemicals with I was silicone doing and all rubber cement paint, and, mm. and uh, for because it was a medical show, there needed right. to be some really squishy, gooey, honestly nasty yeah. stuff. I'm and, yeah, I'm afraid uh, that somewhere down the line, that, I mean, if they really don't start straightening out and and understanding the nature of the materials that they're working with, especially with the, with airbrushing, mm -hmm. that they're going to be some really horrendous lawsuits down the line. Well, one of the things that I, I've, I've witnessed are people who use too high of PSI with their uh, mm -hmm. compressors. It's airbrush makeup. It's not hmm. a dummy in a paint booth. Yeah, exactly. Um, and um, boy, I shouldn't probably say this either, but I will. Um, that last season on Buffy the Vampire Slayer, um, the demon trailer uh, would get cloudy. I, I mean, I was almost intoxicated from the alcohol fumes mm -hmm. and other people having the PSI uh, above 35 mm -hmm. at, or, or at 35 and, and some people using the airbrush as their primary delivery system for paint and there would be five six of us in a trailer all airbrushing mm -hmm. and and um, no ventilation uh, and then the doors closed and I'm like you know you've got to if so you might be a little chilly or your actor might be a little chilly you've got to work this out because yeah. this is this is not yeah, going to be in you can't breathe that you know and I always say you know uh, if you're working if you're working with an airbrush, I mean, it honestly, it, it looks strange, but you take a little piece, little piece of cotton and put it up into your talent's nose. Mm. They can breathe through the cotton. It filters out all the fumes if there mm. or, or, or the part of the particulates in mm -hmm. the air, uh, and uh, and you do the same to yourself, you know, uh, or you wear a, 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 that and a mask, or you yeah. put cotton over and you put the mask over it so that you're not breathing in all of this this uh, the, the particulates. Right. And and if you really think about it. Uh, the, uh, the the powders that make up part of the, the pigment formula right. that's being sprayed, that's what you're seeing in the air. Mm -hmm. And there's talc, you yes. know, and talc, they're like little miniature microscopic rocks, right. you know, that do not dissolve. Right. They embed themselves in your lungs and over time can cause some real damage. Right. You know, so we, as makeup artists, we've really, you know, we say, oh, it's not dangerous, oh, this or that. But, you know, Dick Smith and I have d discussed this over uh, at dinner the one time at one of the, one of the trade shows where he and I invited him to dinner. And we talked about it. And, he, you know, he says, you know, my, my opinion of the airbrushing situation makes me very unpopular. And I said, but no, but your opinion of the whole situation is right on the money, Dick. Mm -hmm. It's right on the money. People have got to wise up to, the, to, to, to being uh, more aware of, of the safety situation right. here. Because it's going to turn around and bite us on the butt down, down the road. You, right. know? you know, I'll tell you what. Uh, we're, we're going to, you have a, you're doing a makeup for us, right? Yes, yes. Uh, what, is, what are you going to be doing for us? Um, this is really, by the way, this is really special. Um, and and uh, uh, it's long overdue, your being here at, oh, the, at the MUA you. TV, you. actually. Right. We're on the second floor of the uh, Makeup Artist Training Center here, Joe Blasco Makeup Artist Training Center, which used to, by the way, this used to be part of the school. Mm. And now we enlarged the school downstairs, okay. and we just knocked all the walls out up here. And we have this huge stage up here. It's fantastic. Yeah. You know, what do you think of the little studio? I think it's great. Yeah. I had no idea it was here. Yeah. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> we've got about like uh, seven or eight different sets. Wow. This is this is the one set. And then we have another set over there, another set over there, another set over there, another set over there. But you're going to be on the set where we do the makeup application demos. Okay. All right. All right. And you're going to do a fat makeup. Is that mm -hmm. right? Yes. Now tell us what materials you're working with. Foam latex. <laughs> okay. And it's it's just a one piece wrap around, and it it's pretty straightforward. Um, and it was a really interesting job. I was in uh, Austin, Texas. I get a phone call from one of my dearest friends, Michelle Bueller, who's been around oh. forever. Oh yeah. And and I thought it, Michelle actually did uh, California and Oh and, she did. And, and so that's the we we work together quite often. Right. Uh, we did a movie a couple of years ago called uh, Vacancy. 
uh, right. and and uh, she was doing Luke Wilson's makeup. And, yes. Uh, uh, but yeah, she's she, old old friend, and and uh, I was uh, I got a call from her, and she was doing It's Holy Sunny in Philadelphia, right. and I'd never really heard of that show. It was on its second or third season at this point. And I'm like, okay. Anyway, she <laughs> I was off in La La Land doing other things and not watching television, but uh, um, she's like. Give me a quote on a fat makeup, and uh, you love it. and it was like, well, I told her. She's like, oh no, they're not going to go for that television. And uh, what do you charge for a fat makeup? Ooh, um, well, um, I, I don't. I don't. Depends think I on should. how fat, right? Exactly. I didn't have to do the suit. It was just the face and a wig. I had a week to do it, and um, I, I gave them the biggest deal. And I'm not even going to mention how low I did it for because it was a favor to Michelle, and um, it. it it just it was a favor to Michelle and yes. and uh, um, but it was ridiculously low yeah. and don't ever underprice yourself. I, I know it and and it was one of those things where um, I, I got on the show and, and uh, ran into an actor I, I worked with many years ago on Big Fish um, Danny DeVito one of the coolest people you'll Isn't he great? ever want to work with <laughs> and um, so talented oh and versatile I, I mean do anything exactly oh my god and it was great Meeting up Talk with him about again. passion. Oh yes. Holy moly! And and he involved me in um, a project called Splatter Cuts that he's been doing for the last couple of years. A little <laughs> like guilty pleasure um, of these short little um, horror film type. Uh, when is psychological this thrillers. Um, they're, they're actually internet. They're like, oh, like it, a, it it's is? like, a, um, I think it's splattercuts.com or something. Check I mean, that out. And he, he, Splatter cuts? Cuts, yes. S P L A T T E R C U T S, meaning film cuts. Yes. Cuts of film. Uh-huh. Uh, so. That's yeah, terrific. Yeah. Oh, wow. we got to check that out. Okay, so um, and Danny I'll, DeVito is doing this. Yes, and, um, and you're doing a lot of the special uh, makeup effects. Yes, uh, for wow. the I think this is the That's second great. grouping of them or whatever. And I got to design like um, some odd characters. And yeah, this right. one guy was stabbed in the face like 13 times or something. Yeah, like weird, just kind of grotesque stuff. Right. Um, this um, um, aborted fetus that grew. Got this woman fi- finds in a dumpster in an alley, and he raised him, and he's like grown up to be this really malformed creature. Um, and it was just and you, you, you I got this. to design this creature. Oh, and I just so. this, this this shy guy. <laughs> <laughs> but, okay, and bump, bump, moving right along. Okay. Um, why don't we go over to the. Uh, well, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to break just for one second. And during that time, uh, Tom and I are going to go over to the makeup application okay. area. And you're going to start on your uh, on your project, right? Okay. Your fat right. makeup. It's actually, um, I think we're probably going to use one of the pieces from It's Always Sunny. It's Always Sunny. Yeah, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Terrific. <laughs> anyway, so. And It's Always Sunny right here at MUA TV. You keep watching. We'll be right back. Uh, okay. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs>